Hi there, my name is Bogdan from Tinky Drone, and I'm going to be answering some more questions today from Drobot. So let's get right into it. Um, here's a first question that we got. How does Tinky handle in the wind? So let me grab Tinky here. This is Tinky. And Tinky handles wonderfully in the wind. Uh, it can handle winds up to, well, we've tested it in winds up to 40 miles an hour, but pretty sure it can handle winds even faster than that, all the way to hurricane level winds. We here are in the desert, and when the temperature changes, the winds pick up quite a bit. Maybe you can hear a little bit of wind in the background because we're shooting outside right now. Uh, so Tanky can handle quite a bit of wind and also gusts of wind. That's when a wind uh, picks up suddenly and kind of shoves it around. And the reason for that is because Tanky has a very, very high power to weight ratio. It has a ton of power, so it can fight the winds. And it has a microprocessor on the inside, like most drones, that stabilizes it. It uh, handles the stabilization algorithm 500 times a second or more. So as soon as the wind comes in, let's say from this side, and would tend to push the drone this way, it immediately counteracts and leans this way to fight the, fight the wind and counteract the wind. Now the drone itself uh, will drift with the wind a little bit back and forth. But as long as you are in control, you can always pull back and it has more than enough power to fight the wind and come back. So to make the long answer short, yes, it handles awesomely and it can handle winds. We've tested up to 40 miles an hour, but probably well into 60 and 70 miles an hour as well. Uh, let's see what the next question is. Uh, how high can it go? Um, well, the legal answer is 400 feet. Uh, the FAA requires you to have a hard 400 feet ceiling, and that's due to the fact that civil aviation, such as you know private planes, Cessnas and such, fly at uh, heights of 400 feet and above, and you don't want to crash into a human piloted plane and bring the plane down, kill people, and destroy your drone as well, but more importantly, kill people. So you want to stay below the 400 feet ceiling, but theoretically speaking, Tanky can go as high as, well, as high as the uh, radio link and the video link will take it, which is about a mile and a half. Uh, but you should not be flying that high. Let's see. Next question. Is it waterproof? Um, no, Tanky is not waterproof. And that's part of uh, its design, basically. Um, Tinky is a racing drone and it produces tremendous amounts of heat, especially from the ESCs, those are the electronic speed controllers, which are located right here. And those are the electronics that control the speed of each motor. And also from the electronics inside the head, it produces quite a bit of heat. So to remove that heat and to cool down the electronics, what we have is a rather unique uh, channeling system. As the propellers spin, like so, they drive air downwards and they drive air into these slits in the arms. Directly underneath those slits, we have the electronic speed controllers, so they get cooled down by the rushing air. And then that air passes through the arms and gets redirected into the head, where it also cools down all the other electronics inside the head. So if we were to make it waterproof, we would lose that cooling ability and in a race or something, it would overheat and fall out of the sky. Um, I do want to make a waterproof drone in the future, but it would be more of an exploration drone, kind of like a DJI Phantom for cruising around and looking at things. And it is actually rather simple to make a drone that's um, waterproof. All you have to do is waterproof the electronics in the head, uh, put a bubble around the camera, and waterproof the ESCs, but the cool thing, all the moving parts, like the motors, things that are usually the hardest to waterproof, uh, don't need to be waterproofed at all. They're origi originally waterproof by design because brushless motors uh, do not have any exposed electronics inside of them. It's just wires that are looped and those wires are completely sealed. So brushless motors by design are waterproof. So one day we'll always make one, but it's gonna be more of a cruising, uh, slower drone. Uh, let's see what else. Did you base this design on any existing aircraft or animal or anything? Um, 
Well, when we were designing Tenki, uh, I was kind of thinking all along about um, an octopus. It really reminds me of an octopus with its kind of head in the middle and tentacles spreading out. And also kind of, it does remind me also of Kodos, I forget what the other alien's name is, but the two green aliens in The Simpsons, Kodos and, uh, it escapes my mind. But anyways, uh, so that was kind of the look inspiration for Tanky. Also the Tiny Tank, the video game kind of inspired the shape of the head. Um, <clears throat> but in terms of other drones, there are other drones on the market that look similar to Tanky. Um, in terms of the fact that they're an X shape with all the electronics centered in the middle, uh, such as uh, Warp Quad and Krieger Drone come to mind as some of the more popular ones. Um, but we weren't really looking at other drones when we designed Tanky. We were kind of trying to achieve certain design goals. So we had design goals such as having a removable pod of the electronics and having it very aerodynamic and very maneuverable and stable. And that's the design we came up with. So let's see, next question. Uh, we did that one. Uh, why did you build drones and when did you get interested in drones? Um, well, I guess I got interested in RC in general, the radio control vehicles, uh, since I was a kid. I had RC cars when I was growing up in Ukraine. And after coming out to the United States, uh, I got really into one-eighth scale buggies, nitro buggies that are about this big, they're four-wheel drive, and they're commonly used for racing. So I was really into that as a kid, and then I got into motorcycles and fast things. And uh, eventually, when we moved out to the desert, I couldn't have any more of my motorcycles and other fast toys, so I started building drones. And this is how my hobby kind of evolved. And in fact, I read these questions ahead of time, so I brought out my very first drone that I built. This is something I built in 2014. Uh, it's a tricopter. I didn't design this one per se. Uh, it was a frame that I purchased and all the electronics I sourced uh, separately like the motors and everything else. But it's my very first tricopter drone. It flies pretty well. It's really fast. It's uh, probably a good deal faster than a DJI Phantom or a drone like that but nowhere nearly as fast as uh, Tanky. And uh, because it's a tricopter, um, it has a tail, a movable tail, that allows it to yaw. Anyways, let's see. Next question. Um, are you working on any other drone designs? See if I didn't. Yeah. All right. Am I working on any other drone designs? Actually, we as a team with um, Yuki, my partner, are working on a uh, Bernie drone. Uh, Bernie is kind of like a smaller version of Tanky. So, as you can see, Bernie is a four inch quadcopter, while Tanky is a five inch quadcopter. Uh, so, it's kind of like its little sibling. They're actually about the same speed at least in terms of acceleration from zero to 60. Uh, Tanky has a slightly higher top speed, but they're kind of competing with each other. And the reason we are building Tank, uh, Bernie is because Bernie is all carbon fiber, which allows us to build the Bernie in much smaller quantities. Uh, for purely production reasons, uh, we can order carbon fiber plates cut for us in quantities of like 50 or 100 uh, units and produce these little drones and sell them much faster versus uh, Tanky. Tanky has a lot of injection molded parts like you know the head, the arms and injection molding is rather difficult to do and it's pricey and you do need to order it in quantities of 500 to 1000 units. This is why we are on Kickstarter trying to kickstart the production of Tanky so we can get all these parts made. Uh, but for Bernie, we can just start making it ourselves and um, start sending Bernies into the world. Uh, we are also working on a much smaller drone, the under 250 gram drone, uh, which will be using very tiny motors such as these. They're still brushless motors, but they're very small. So as you can see, they're much smaller than even Bernie and uh, 
much, much smaller than Tinky's um, propellers. And uh, uh, this drone is going to be under 250 grams, which is the ceiling for the FAA registration. So if you have a drone over 250 grams, uh, you have to register it with the FAA, which is not very difficult, but it still requires a registration. And a smaller drone like this uh, would be completely legal without any kind of registration or licensing. So let's see what's the next question. Would bigger propellers make uh, a faster drone? Um, it depends. Uh, it's one of those questions where the answer is it depends. It depends how you define faster. If you want your drone to go as fast as possible in one direction without changing direction, just kind of top stop speed, then yeah, a bigger propeller, generally speaking, with a much more powerful motor, will deliver a higher top speed because larger propellers in general have higher efficiency. So the, high, the larger your propeller is, the more efficiency you derive from that motor and uh, the more speed you can actually develop given the same power of the motor. However, uh, Tanky was designed as a racing drone for FPV racing. And F most FPV racing takes place on rather small courses, uh, about the size of a baseball field, with lots of turns and twists and hoops that you have to go through. And for that kind of racing, what really matters is acceleration and maneuverability. Top speed matters, and Tanky can develop a pretty outstanding top speed, but it matters less than acceleration and your ability to turn on the dime and flip around and you know change directions really quickly. And for that, you really need a drone with uh, smaller propellers because smaller propellers allow, to, allow you to accelerate and decelerate the motors a lot faster. So that allows you to turn and twist really, really quickly. For instance, Tanky, if you put it in horizon mode and you just flip the stick to the right, it can rotate like this uh, it can flip, and it can flip about three or four times in a second. Like, you won't get a chance to stop before it'll flip like two or three times. So it's incredibly fast. And that's due to the fact that it has uh, relatively small propellers, relatively small motors, uh, that allow you to be very maneuverable. Uh, with the larger propellers, it would just take longer and you'll be less maneuverable, but you would develop a higher top speed. But then again, of course, if you're shooting strictly for very high top speed, drones are really the wrong vehicle for that. You want to go with an airplane. You're never going to beat an airplane in terms of how fast you can go straight forward, or a rocket for that matter. Anyways, um, I hope you like the answers. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Um, and have fun at your camp.